Okay, you ready? Should we do it? Yeah, let's let's get this show on the road. Okay. Hey, what is up, guys? Klaus next here. We are here today with Carter Happy, and we are doing the podcast. This is episode nine, and today we're going to be talking existentialism. So me and Carter met. Okay, it's it's kind of weird how we met because we met at <laughs> practicum. We did were we? Both, we were both placed in the same school. I don't even think that was the first. Carter and Zach interaction. Oh, it may have been in class. I think it might have been YMCA first, it, in it, passing, right? I don't think it was the YMCA. I think it was, it was we sat beside each other in class at some random time, and then we were placed in the same school. And then I think we kind of got to know each other through school. And then I remember I got that job at the Y, and I walked in and you were in your lifeguard shirt on your break. Right. And I'm like, oh, you work at the Y. Yeah, that might have been it. And I, I think I'd known you, did I know you through Brianna at that point? Yeah. That might have been a thing as well, because there, there had been a few gatherings, or I'd at least heard of you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the name came up. Yeah, yeah Brianna yeah. was my link to meeting all those people at the Y. Who mm. wouldn't have had you or Muhammad on the podcast if it wasn't rough. for her. Yeah. So, uh, and then I guess we our friendship grew through the Y. Yeah. Do the Y and Y parties. Y parties are the best parties. Yeah, going to miss those. Yeah. So, anyway, today we're talking existentialism. And I picked Carter for this podcast topic because we this is not a new subject to us. And we've discussed it before at length. And it's, it's sometimes difficult to find people in your life that you can challenge yourself to have these deeper conversations. Because, I don't know, everyone kind of has different beliefs or understandings or like religious backgrounds or like things that prevent you from like challenging your understanding i think that's almost the best part whenever i can find someone who disagrees with me because it makes it more interesting if you're just sitting next to someone who's like oh yeah totally i agree with you yes 100 percent (laughs) like there's there's no conversation going on it's all this like one way nonsense and you're not learning anything yeah yeah that's true yeah, so you want someone who's going to challenge you, and you're not looking to necessarily agree, just to expand your horizon a little bit more. Definitely. All right, um, so yeah, the topic's pretty expansive, so I have some discussion topics written down to kind of, I guess, keep us down to earth, or along some kind of path, some kind of guiding path that people can keep up with anyway. Right. That's yeah. that's, <laughs> that's always that's, troublesome. Yeah. So existentialism always leads to those inevitable rabbit paths. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. So let's break down what existentialism is. Oh boy. For people who don't know, in the simplest terms possible, and I, I think in my own definition, it's kind of our understanding of our place in the world, maybe. Or, yeah, in, or, in a sense. Or the or the reason why we do things. Yeah. Yeah. I think existentialism has a lot to do with being encumbered with freedom and i i don't think a lot of people understand freedom as being cumbersome but it it, the more free you realize you are the more you become paralyzed by all these choices yeah i mean like even just like living in living in canada and living living in a free country but i mean if you push your understanding a little bit farther than that you start to see the the borders I mean, you think that you're free and you have all this power and freedom. You can do whatever you want. And then you try and get get into the U.S. Right. You know what I mean? And then there's, there's, you realize like, uh, maybe we're not so free roaming humans as we thought. Uh, I I, I mean, in a sense, you also are though. Yeah. Because if, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could sneak into the U.S. There's nothing preventing (laughs) you from sneaking into the U.S. Yeah, you might get caught and there's repercussions from that, but you can still... You can still do these things and there's nothing there's nothing stopping you more than yourself from making those decisions and i i don't mean illegally enter another country that's not what i'm trying to to promote here but (laughs) that's what we're doing on the podcast yeah we're gonna teach you how to be evil promoting do illegal things so why do you associate existentialism with freedom Mm. I don't know. I feel like that goes, that goes hand in hand, existential freedom, yeah. realizing that there actually is nothing 
stopping you from doing what you want other than yourself. Yeah. To to an extent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that you're, you're think, in control more than you think you are. Yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily that you're in control entirely out of your success because in most cases you need an audience or other people to buy into your vision but that's true but that i guess that just depends on on which way you go which way you take it right i mean what i should have included in the introduction is that carter recently got into the youtube game Woohoo! with actually uh, i should say woo <laughs> Nice, got it. Yeah, uh, you got the plug. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's Woo Wee Nation. And you can find them on YouTube. They're starting off, so you can go show your boys some love. Mm-hmm. Um, Please do. But, Check us out on YouTube. Yeah. We're kind of okay sometimes. <laughs> They're pretty good. Um, but what I was saying is that like you, you're getting into this this field of like entertainment. And like, and yeah, you you do need to you you're a free person to do whatever you want, but that doesn't mean people are gonna like your stuff or agree with you. Definitely. But you are free to do it. Yeah. And you know what your reason is for doing it is is completely yeah. individual. Yeah. To you and who you are. Yeah, and I think like when we think existential, we think of like the why questions, and I, and I think like all like kids do this. They'll ask why. They ask why everything to to like to the point where it just pisses off every adult in the room. Yep. Right. And it's like, well, you know that you're going into the the teaching field. Yeah. Yeah. And like, at what point did we stop asking those why questions? When people you know I mean? started getting mad. <laughs> when your yeah. mom said, "Because I said so." Yeah. Yeah, that's true. When your mom said, or your dad said, or your teacher said, stop asking questions now. It's not okay to ask questions anymore. You can't do that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like a lot of times we get just happy with our lives or the way things are. We don't understand things, so we just accept them Mm -hmm. for face value, or we just choose Settling into comfort is definitely... Yeah, and like just choosing, like, uh, ignorance is bliss is the expression think about it it is like it's easier just to not think about it not question things not stress yourself out and get a proper sleep at night (laughs) i i I mean i kind of disagree short term ignorance is bliss long term if you can sit down for eight hours and think about whatever idea is eating at you i think that's better long term and you're gonna be you're gonna be better off than that ignorant person who never thought about that idea before yeah yeah i mean there's more more potential for growth ultimately who you are as a person and it depends how you define your or how you define your happiness if you define your happiness by growth then if you're ignorant your whole life you're not going to grow or you'll be you'll be convinced you're growing but you're not actually growing so would you say that if somebody was Maybe naive, maybe they just deliberately didn't push themselves, but they found themselves in a lifestyle that they were happy with right? for the entirety of their lives, but never quite grew into the person they could be. Is that necessarily a bad thing? No, if not it, at all. It would all come back I, to I happiness, think there's right? something really honorable about being a father or mother who works a nine-to-five job, makes the money they need to support a family, gets married, has kids, yeah. has a dog, has 1.5 children, yeah. you know, has their car, they live their life, they have their buddies, they do their thing. I think that's yeah. that's a really awesome way to live life if 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 you're happy in it. Yes, that it would all come down to whether yeah. you're satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're still you're surviving, contributing yeah. to the human race. In a you know. small way, in your own little way. <laughs> well, you're, you're. I don't know if you're creating the next generation. I guess if you have a family and kids. There you go. Yeah. Which is which big, is important. That's that's super important. The universe. world is overpopulated, but at the end of the day, we still <laughs> we still need people, or do we need people? I don't know. See, that's that's where existentialism and I think philosophy and metaphysics in general start to get fun. Is where you you question. Oh, do people? need to be around Hmm, i wonder let's let's talk about that for eight hours yeah unfortunately we only have 
our allotment of time that we have going on right now. Yeah. So when did you when did you find yourself like you actually realized at some point in your life like wow I not not to like like call ourselves superior minds or anything like that mm -hmm. but like at what point did you realize that you were maybe you like question things more than other people or you realize you were like an existential person right um did that ever happen to you did you ever have that like wow well moment yeah i'm it's it's hard to pinpoint because it 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 isn't it isn't a, ever a moment i think we we convince ourselves that life comes down to those moments where we where we figure it out and and sometimes it does where you have mm -hmm. that eureka kind of Yeah. There's there's a word for it. No, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, that that eureka moment where you're like, "Aha, I get it." But most of the time it comes down to this slow incremental all the things starting to line up and you getting to the point where where okay, I got it. Yeah. You weren't sure, you weren't sure, you're a little more sure than you were before. You're getting closer and closer and even when you're convinced, you have like quote unquote got it you don't really yeah you're just closer even if you have 99 percent, you can never have this this pure certainty and that's another aspect of existential thought as well as you can never be yeah. sure beyond any doubt that anything is true that's true yeah so it's everything is up to interpretation everyone can have their own personal truth but you still have to question those truths yeah i think that's important a lot of people are like oh that's just my personal truth yada dee da da <laughs> and it's I don't, I don't know it's unfortunate because it's not not always the case yeah i think personal truths exist but i also think you need to prove them you need and to if be you don't if you don't have yeah. the proof or the def at least a somewhat of a defense for it then it's yeah i yeah. mean i i find that like a lot actually like recently um stuff that like i've noticed because i'm getting my degree this year i'm mm -hmm. kind of like reflecting on these past few years and what i know and like a lot of stuff that was common knowledge about the body and exercise um over time that gets disproven and we have new theories yeah because the body yeah. is so incredibly complex yeah. and i'm now realizing that i'm entering a field that is very like difficult to lock down on any kind of truth because what is absolute hard fact today this is what the body does this is how this reacts 10 years from now we're going to be laughing you know because we're going to yeah. find well, something and, new or and, something a little more in depth and what's also true is that everyone's body is different yes, so there's exactly. going to be a best plan or a best you know that the true best workout plan for a certain individual yeah. Me myself, I'm 150 pounds. I'm five foot seven. I'm I'm a skinny guy, so I can't be the guy that's bodybuilding and gonna be a hundred pounds and compete on stage like that. Just, I mean, I could. Yeah. I could do that if I had the desire to, but my body is not. You're aware of your body type. Made. Yeah. To do that, so okay, I'll take a different approach and do something that's more. Exactly. Fitting yeah. and I'm more, more suited people to. should be aware of yeah. their body types and not, not to say like discourage you from anything. No, of you, course you not. Of course every, not. You yeah. Try everything, but, but what I noticed is when I was working out and I, I tried to do bodybuilding for a long time mm -hmm. and I was becoming unhealthy. Mm. Like I was injured all the time. My stomach hurt. Um, yeah. I was taking pre-workout and I was getting thunderclap headaches and yeah. all like there are all these things kind of lining up and telling me that okay Carter you gotta slow down yeah this is not for you if you keep going this way you're gonna injure yourself yeah beyond what you've already experienced it's only gonna get worse yeah but have you found what works for you no no you're still in that process um then. what what happened was I was doing bodybuilding recently and then I kind of transitioned a little into powerlifting but I upon self-reflection I realized I was doing it for the wrong reasons I was mm. focused too much on aesthetics 
and the numbers associated with the weight of my lifts and all that kind of stuff, which was leading to injury. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than growth, which is what I should really be after anyways. So upon realizing that, I'm like, okay, I need to take a break from this and not be in the gym so that I can get my mind centered again and focused on what I really want. Yeah. I mean, that, that all, that all comes down to like why you're doing it, Mm -hmm. your purpose Mm -hmm. for exercising. There we go. And like, I really, I really respect bodybuilders because it's really, it's tough and it's disciplined and you see those guys suffer and like that's respectable growing process on its own. But at the same time, like I was in, I was bodybuilding for like a year, year and a half. And I, and I found the same thing when I shifted my focus towards not so much how I look, but more how I feel and like being strong because, because of all the reasons to become mm-hmm. strong, like to be functionally strong or to be, feel strong emotionally or spiritually yeah. that everything to me came yeah. down to being strong. And my why reason, I looked back at why I was bodybuilding. It was like, well, I just wanted to look good. That's very self fueled, yeah. and like, like and it's said, okay it's, to look good. Respect- no, yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. And that's in, in a sense like, it, if if you want to look at exercise that way, it's all selfish yeah. because it's all for you. So you you go for a one hour run for you, you know. So we can't look at it that way. It's yeah. more taken care of. Well, it's it's always you to do. for you. Exercise yeah. is for you. Exercise yeah. isn't. And it is for you. I mean, if you're the the sixty year old man who's at risk for heart attack and you're exercising, okay, it's not entirely for you because you you want to stay alive to you know take care of your family or yeah. be around for that. So then that's that shifts it a little bit. But I think yeah, at the end of the day, most most exercise is for your yourself. It's not for other people. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, okay, I'm glad. Which, there's... that that leads us to a very good existential question, which is, what do I want and what do I need? Yeah. Which is one of, this This has been one of my favorite tools recently and over the past year. And it came out of this almost panic attack that I had where I was so stuck in my mind and in my my thoughts in this weird sort of infinite loop mm-hmm. of thoughts um, you know questioning myself what do I want blah 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 and just just really stuck and in this bad place and this is why I think ignorance is not as blissful as we might think um, so out of that panic attack I've been gifted this lovely tool that I get to use to minimalize my life where I look at what do I really want and do I really need anything at the end of the day Mm. yeah yeah I remember we talked about that yeah so have you have you it's your answer will be different in probably Mm -hmm. two years but like right have you found your purpose what you think or what your understanding of what your um, purpose is? I, th- I think right now, the big thing that I want is just to be happy. Because mm-hmm. when you're coming out of a place of joy and you feel fulfilled, then it's a lot easier to do all the other things in your life. Yeah, Like it's a lot easier to help people or pour yourself out if you yourself are full. Yeah. If you're not full, you can't exactly Too much yeah i love that analogy yeah the overflowing cup mm-hmm. yeah 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 how does your um how do you think that your teaching root uh it ties into your passion i i, to, I think about level. it all the time and just recently i was questioning myself you know do i even want to teach mm. do i want to be in a classroom do i want to be in a system that i actually don't agree with a lot of the time yeah. in my in my practicum this year I won't name any schools mm-hmm. or or names I really struggled with some of my cooperating teachers and some of the techniques and approaches they were taking to teaching yes because they're counterproductive 
if you're going to sit there and, you know, almost pick on the kid who's really struggling at home and acting out on at school. Yeah. You know, because he's he is at there's there's a kid acting out in class or, you know, showing up late or being destructive. There's a reason that's going on. And if you're just going to kick them out, that's another piece yeah. of proof to them that no one cares about me. I don't matter. No one's listening to me. It doesn't matter what I do or what approach I take. I'm still going to be hated. It's yeah. it's troublesome. Um, I've seen I guess too. to answer your question more, yeah, I do. I do still want to teach. I don't know what way that's yeah. going to be or what form that's going to take. Well, it's good to challenge why yeah. you want to because it all comes down to so why it, questions. It might be in a school. It might be in a private tutor position where I'm working for a family and it might just be that I've spent five years in school so I can take better care of my own child's education and not necessarily homeschooling but I also think that that's a possible approach and I have the tools that I could do that very well yeah okay let me like um challenge you with my own sure. experience I had a similar experience in, in education it took me three years of being in education or my fourth year actually it was really only this year that I came to a, a, a complete mm-hmm. decision that I didn't want to be a teacher anymore but what I, I've learned about myself in this process is that I do want to teach I just don't want to teach in the school system right I'm a born educator it's what I it's what I love to do I started this YouTube channel I'm wired this way yeah I just, when I got into university, I thought, oh, I, I like health and fitness and I like to coach football players. Yeah. So like, this is the only possibility is to t- be a gym teacher. But over time, I guess I got some wisdom and experience and I, I saw the world on a bigger, like a uh, wider perspective. And I realized that I can teach in other ways. Yeah. It doesn't have to be in a, in a gym because man, like, like you were saying, like my experience is just like being in a practicum in a gym and like the phys ed teacher probably knows like so much about the body they know about injuries they know mm-hmm. how to plan a class exercise the kids don't want to be there and for, for the most part from what I've seen um, I was in a bit of a difficult school but like the teacher was just worn out like he's he's running his fingers through his hair like he's just tired you know he's just getting through every day I think I know day. the teacher you're talking he's, about he's putting but... all of his energy into telling kids to get off their cell phones and yeah. Remember your gym yeah. clothes. Okay. And like by the time that you've gotten past this this layer of like making mm-hmm. sure everybody's in line, mm-hmm. it's like how much energy have you exerted into that before yeah. you've actually gotten into teaching? How much classroom management are you gonna have to do before you get to really dig into your passion and well, make the I, I think that that's a really make? cool thing for me is that I want to teach philosophy in a way and I think people kind of get caught up in that. They're like, ooh, philosophy, big word. And I guarantee you, you engage in philosophy at least once a week in a conversation you have with someone in your life. And it's very simple. It's a conversation about the big, important questions of life. And the professional route is doing proofs and all those sorts of things. But I think at its basis level is it's just talking about your ideas mm-hmm. and doing this sort of me- metaphysical analysis of what you think and what the other person thinks and discussing that topic and trying to get somewhere where you can meet in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, more people should challenge their, mm-hmm. their and I think views everyone on does. the world. I think everyone probably does. Less, or probably less, probably more than they think that they do. Yeah. Man, I remember like a couple of years ago, you, you just get lost in this rut of going to school and you think that's all that you amount to is, mm-hmm. is what you're doing in school. I remember just like, it was around this time I was kind of feeling like depressed because you know, you, you go through these cycles and I got, I don't know why, but I got really hung up on space. I went through this phase where like, uh, you, you, you know, because space is beautiful, magnificent. We've all mm-hmm. had that wallpaper. Mm-hmm on our computers now and then and it because it just really makes you think because you're looking into something that's like 
ever expanding and it's the one thing we don't really know we haven't even been to mars yet but we know that there's other solar systems out there yeah. you know what i mean and like, makes I you got, realize how yeah small and insignificant you really are when but, you like, look out into the greater beyond and just black holes alone we don't even mm. we we are currently trying to understand the physics of black holes right because you look at reality and then you just see you can physically see time and dimension bending right. moving in another direction yeah and like how much of this universe do we really not know yet yeah like well the, it, we got it, even even beyond that how much of our own ocean do we even know exactly there's we always that like the we we understand more about space than we do about the ocean on earth yeah and like the the computer that got us to the moon was had less power than the phones we keep in our pockets less power than a ti 83 like a texas instruments yeah 83 scientific calculator that you used in high school to do graphing yeah so like we just who knows where we're going to be what we're going to understand mm -hmm. okay i wanted to talk about this with you um, okay we live in a, a very material world right um it, it, how do you live in this material world and like also value spiritual health and like how do we met, how mm -hmm. do we navigate this material and spiritual world yeah it's a very um, tough question but it's something that i think about i think it comes back to this needs and wants tool that i was talking about earlier yeah um so to to clarify um a good tool for myself is to be convinced that needs do not exist so I'll, I'll be a little more clear. The stuff you're convinced that you need, you don't actually quote unquote need that. You need that in order to get to something that you want. So for example, I was driving here in my truck today. I realized, oh, my bladder is very full and it feels like I need to use the washroom. Right. So I told myself, oh, I need to go to the bathroom. And this is kind of a silly one, but then, you know, you have that thought, do I really, do I need to use the bathroom or do I just want to not pee my pants because that would be embarrassing. Interesting. So, cause like I could just do that right there in the vehicle. Seat, I see what, I see what you're saying. And that would be uncomfortable and there's nothing stopping me from doing that other than the discomfort and embarrassment that comes from it. And the, that's definitely, for me, the wrong decision. Yeah. And socially, it's the wrong decision, as far as other people are concerned. But I didn't need to hold I, my I bladder. And then I was also like, okay, like, how do I deal with this problem? Well, I could yeah. pull over and pee right on the road. <laughs> or I could, you know, I could go to the McDonald's and use their yeah. washroom. Or I can drive to Zach's and go when I get there. Yeah. And, you know, I opted for... There's a lot of traffic. I'm going to be stuck here for a while. I'm going to go to the McDonald's and use the washroom. Yeah. Not because I need to pee, but because I don't want to pee my pants. Yeah. And I think that is the best route of action. Yeah. And what you, what you kind of get from this is it's a very simple tool to start is what do I think I need? Is that need true? What do I actually want? Focus on then what you want and then look at alternate paths to get right. to what you want. So let's clarify on your, your question again. Within materialism, how um, do we kind of navigate and balance that with spiritual well-being? Yeah, because we I think we live in this material dimension, but I also think that there's this spiritual dimension. Great. And I think that that's very hard to tap into and other cultures yeah. do a better job of that and definitely making it, making it more just a yeah, part of everyday yeah. living yeah and i think just maybe in north america that's something that we struggle with or we refuse yeah. to believe it because yeah think, i think, think i think a lot of people nonsense. i think a lot of people are convinced that they need a nice house and a nice car and 1.5 yeah. children and to be married and to have a nine to five job that pays yeah. $60,000 a year and those things are okay if you actually want them yeah but I think to tell ourselves that we need them is foolish yeah because what 
what at the end of the day by getting those things i think most people are seeking happiness people are seeking to be satisfied yeah i agree i mean yeah what what my kind of understanding and this was a, a like like you said sometimes you come to understand yourself over a growth sometimes you have this flip a switch moment yeah i had this this moment where i realized like you know if a tornado came and wiped up my house and i lost everything what 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 value would my life still have would you mm-hmm. think oh i lost everything like i'm gonna have to start over collecting things again you know like or if you if you got stranded on an island mm-hmm. what would you bring with you and it's yeah. like when it comes down to it the only thing you truly own in this world is your body not even, even that that's like limited because yeah, you can but, lose but the parts time, of your body and lose function of your body at any given time i think I suppose, but it's even yours. your mind you can lose your mind so i think at the end of the day it's like it's a soul thing uh, that's the only thing that can't be taken away as a soul but okay but to to, to stay on a route with what okay I was saying, okay um i guess like i don't own my wife oh god no i i could thank you for acknowledging <laughs> that i don't own my family none mm-hmm. of these things are their blood but they're not they're not mine i could right. lose them at any time and you're right the soul is is another almost another entire that's podcast another layer <laughs> but like i guess that's when i started to realize like man i need to take care of my body like it's if i lose everything even the clothes off my body the way that i live my life now i'll still have my health i'll still be able to get around yeah. i'm still strong yeah. enough to do what i have to do i could still survive you know what I mean? And that's kind of, that was one thing that motivated me, was the separation from the material. Great. And I guess I was motivated by the fact that, like, you've only got this one body. Um, I, I heard a very good analogy for this the other day. Uh, there, there's a king. And I, oh, I, can't, I wish I knew where I heard this from because it is such an awesome analogy and I want to quote the person who said it. There's a king and he knows he is going to die and he does not want to die alone. So he goes to his fourth wife and asks her, will you die with me when I pass away? And she said, no, I'm going to remarry and live on without you and I'm just going to go to the richest person available. Yeah. And so, okay, the king went to his third wife who he showed off to all his friends and asked his third wife, you know, will will you leave with me? No. I'll miss you and I'll grieve for you but I'm going to stay behind. And then he went to his second wife, and he he loved his second wife as well. And she she was very beautiful. And he asked his wife, second wife, would you would you come with me when I die? And she said, No, I can't come with you, but I'll take care of your funeral, and I'll always remember you. And then his first wife, who he had neglected his whole life came up to him and said I will go with you and I will die with you and he felt bad because he had neglected his first wife his Mm. whole life and hadn't taken care of her as much as he knew he should have and the the fourth wife is all his material objects which will be sold and spread amongst other people to the highest bidder to whoever inherits them the third is his body that he spent so much time building up and taking care of. The second is his family and his loved ones who care about him and who he cares about, but unfortunately can't go with him. Mm-hmm. And the first wife is his soul. Love it. And... I I feel like this represents where a lot of people are at. They spend all their time and interest on their material objects, their body, 
their family. And that's great. And those things are important. But a lot of the time we neglect what's actually going to come with us or maybe not come with us, but what is most essential is those, those soul pieces in ourselves that are just so integral and unavoidable. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great analogy. Mm -hmm. It does a really good job. But I was wondering, like, what's the take? You know, where's it this? going? It's going why? Yeah. You know, they all suck. Um, yeah, that's, I really like that. Um, I, I want to talk more about the soul, but that's a very hard approach to hit. So let's yeah. talk about, because I've been thinking about this a lot, and I think that mm. this is a fun topic. This is something that science has yet to really understand, and something that only someone who's a spiritual person can work with. I love these. <laughs> That is consciousness. Okay. So, so a lot of people believe that the consciousness is the soul. Okay. And this is, I watched a video where a guy was explaining consciousness to a large crowd of people. And he was trying to get them all on the same page as him at once. So he said, uh, you could say any word. He just said, he was talking about the rock star energy drink. And he said, okay, everybody all at once, say the word rock star. Three, two, one. Everyone says rock star, mm -hmm. right? And then, okay, Carter, now I want to get you to say the word rock star. I don't want you to say it out loud. I just want you to say it. Okay? Just keep your mouth closed. Just, like, say it in your head. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. Three, two, one. You just said it. You just heard it. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, I want you to close your eyes and imagine a can of a rock star. Imagine holding it. Imagine you pulled it right out of the refrigerator at 7-Eleven. It's cold. Imagine cracking it open and taking a sip, right? And now open your eyes and you just spoke without speaking, right? You've looked without seeing, you've tasted without tasting. Mm -hmm. Is that the consciousness? Those are all your senses that you can tap into. You can, you can hear, you can have songs stuck mm -hmm. in your head and hear without hearing. Yeah. What is that? What is that in you that has all your senses? Right. Yeah, and I think that comes down to the divide of your imagination and then you can imagine what things would feel like and what they can smell like and what things sound like and you have a memory of okay. them. So I pulled from memory okay. what a cold beverage felt like. I haven't had a rock star well, in the longest the time. Drink, yeah. No, but like I'm trying to think, oh, what does a rock star taste like? So I'm like, oh, it's probably got that like bittery sort of energy... Yeah. drink taste going on not entirely sure because i haven't had one in a while yeah and that's where that that divide comes right like you have you have your senses yeah but your senses are only linked to your consciousness okay so and then you also have your ability to like imagine those things and that's what i think i'm probably wrong but I think that's a pretty... Does your imagination maybe draw from your consciousness? Because that's... that's again, like... another tough one. I don't, like, where does imagination sit? Does it sit in your brain? Does it sit in your consciousness? Does it sit, sit in your soul? Yeah. Are consciousness and soul the same thing? Yeah, I mean... There's, there's so many questions. There's, like... Uh, like, I, I study success successful people a lot mm. well success by whatever definition you want to make it but who all have uh, advocated for um uh, what's the word like to, like having a vision envisioning every day remembering your vision and like actually sitting down and think imagining what you want your future to be every day and every day taking a step towards that vision that's kind mm -hmm. of like the law of attraction if right you've heard, if you've heard of the law of yeah. attraction that's the powerful stuff that your your soul is is kind of speaking you could you could say this you could say it however you want i'm going to say soul it's kind of speaking out as to what you want for yourself as to who yeah. you are as a person and then you physically emotionally mentally try and make that mm -hmm. happen every day well i think in a way it's almost like prayer i'll be honest i love yep jesus i love god god takes care of me on a regular basis I know a lot of people don't agree with Christianity, and that's okay. I'm mighty fine with that. If you want to disagree with me, go right ahead. Yeah. That doesn't 
hit me at all. And I know, like, we we can agree on a few things. And, and when I talk about this same topic with other people, it really sets them off and they can't handle it. And that's okay. And then I just know, all right, I don't talk about that with them. But I think, in a way, what you're talking about is a lot like prayer. Yeah. You put these things out there and not necessarily for a response but you're you're putting it your your ideas your thoughts your desires you're communicating with whatever higher power whether you call that universe god creator um yeah. law of attraction it's it's all part and parcel of the same yeah entity so do you th- you think that there's there's for sure something else at work <laughs> <laughs> I I like to I like to believe. Yeah, it I helps mean, there's, me, there's it some... helps me sleep at night. It gives the world order. Yeah. I shouldn't have said the word for sure, um, but I mean like there's this is. This I have is I have line. unquantify I have unquantifiable truth. <laughs> yeah, this is unquantifiable. Like, I can't yeah. prove it to anyone else, but I yes I do believe that there is something greater. That's like the like we were talking like the the spiritual world mm-hmm. and the material world, and like that there's something. Maybe just uh, something else, something about the universe yeah. in, in play, unfolding yeah. exactly the way that it's supposed to for you. I've experienced too much strange, unexplainable things to believe that there's nothing else out yeah. there. And this is all just random. There was the Big Bang and then everything after that was random. I think that's yeah. definitely a mechanism of a creator. Yeah. And... I, I think there are also some uh, religious, spiritual people who are naive to not believe scientific evidence and theory. Yeah. But just that, you know, those scientific evidence and theories show how it was done. Yeah. That's all it's doing. It's not disproving yeah. that a God exists because a God could have caused the big bang yes the scientists haven't proven who or what yeah. caused it right in the same way that we don't understand consciousness exactly in the same way and we don't know where we're going to be where mm-hmm. the human race is going to go and i mean a lot of cultures are already there just as a way that they look at the world the way that they understand the world i don't know i think that a lot of us in north america have this blocker up against anything spiritual and it, it really, it really s- hinders your growth as a person because you don't challenge yourself to think mm-hmm. past this, which really interrupts your growth. Yeah. Well, and it, it, uh, it hinders your growth as to what really matters at yeah. the end of the day. What actually matters? Does your, does your car matter? No. Does your house matter? No. That could be blown away by a storm. Does your money yeah. Matter? No. How about your friends? Oh, you know, your friends kind of matter. You can have good experiences together. You can share your emotional things. And yeah, like your partner too and your family. I, I, I think at the bottom line, your experiences are really important. And your yourself self-growth in all ways yeah. so that could be through exercise or through meditation or doing your thing that you love so like for me it's you know playing guitar and talking I just love talking and yeah. I love teaching and there's all these helping people there's those you know basic things that you really love to do and I think those are those are important yeah yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Man, I think you hit the nail on the head right there. It's 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 important to question the things that you have that that are in your life. What's important? Who's and like even like the things in your life that you're utilizing as tools and helping you grow as a person. In that sense, the material can really help you. And and like like the like my camera, all my recording equipment, right. the laptop, right. they're all. Really, they're all expensive toys uh-huh. that a grown man likes to play yeah, with. Yeah. They're tools that are helping me live yeah. out my vision. 
But I think it would be naive to believe that you can't carry out your vision without those tools. Yes. Like there's still there's still ways for you to do what you love with almost nothing. Yeah. And it might not come out as good or be as profitable or successful, but you can still carry it out. For example, I really want to move out. For those of you who don't know, I live at home with my parents. Yeah. I share a room with my brother. We have bunk beds. Yeah. He's 18, I'm 22. Yeah. I'm in okay, I'm in university, so obviously it's money's an issue, but it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So I really want to move out. So okay, like I'm I was like racking my brain. I'm thinking of all these ways I'm going to move out. I was like talking to buddies, see if we can room together and then the, like just the money didn't make sense. I also really enjoy spending time outside. Yeah. So this summer I booked a campsite for an entire month. Yeah. And nice. I'm just going to go live in a campsite for an entire month <laughs> because not only does it get me living on my own, but I also get to be outside at the same time. And it's that it's a compromise. It's not entirely what I want, but it's something achievable that I can have yeah. right now. And it's helping fulfill yeah. what, what, what yeah. you really want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because what I really want is that, that freedom and that space to do my own thing yeah. and not have my family bickering with me hey clean up after yourself hey yeah. i need help with this hey it's too late please be quiet hey da -da 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 -da, yeah. right and i love my family don't get me wrong but a man just gets to a point in his life where it's like okay it's, it's done no i get it done I, had this, I had the same thing yeah you just get this um you just you just hear your calling Mm -hmm. one day you know and I was I was kind of getting that at home too it was not it was just tension and, yeah. and that tension was because I believe now uh, that it was because I was ready to be my own alpha male yeah to be my own man of the house sure, yeah and my dad was was the current alpha yeah. and man of yeah. the house so you're kind of jockeying for yeah. power exactly and so, he's been established yeah. for so long and he actually has more power than you so exactly like, eh. and I was I was hearing yeah. my calling and a lot of people have told me like man you you moved out really early like you got married really early it's like well i was just it was just my calling you yeah. know like you can't you can't explain it anymore that yeah. my my soul was crying out and saying yeah. like it's time yeah get out yeah <laughs> yeah and uh i think i man i think this has been a really good conversation yeah i i think to sum it all up are we getting close here i think so okay to sum it all up ask more questions you can never yeah. ask too many questions we all need to revert to that three-year-old child who cannot stop asking why yeah and maybe not ask other people why but because you have some more lived experience Ask yourself why. Challenge your own understanding. Why do I want this? Why is this the way that it is? What do I want? What do I need? Yeah. Where do I want to go? Where do I see myself in this many years? What are my goals? What are the things I actually care about? What does it mean to be conscious, alive? What matters? What does the mean? What's the meaning of life? All those lovely, awesome questions. Just ask them because then you will get that tiny step yeah. closer to the truth yeah. or to at least your truth yeah and like just kind of to connect what i was talking about earlier with space because i i, I we, we ended off in talking about something else I, I didn't include my point but it yeah. has to do with these why questions is that i got lost in all these big why questions to the point where i was depressed but like it was important to ask them because i think i ultimately grew a lot as a person through that phase of just like not understanding things mm -hmm. and like feeling frustrated because I will never understand some of these things. Yeah. But like it also now fuels me thinking about the fact that we're in this massive universe that's yeah, ever expanding yeah. and like that actually motivates me now because I don't know why. But I all I do know, my truth, is that I'm this human in a race full of humans and all of us, no matter what power you are, no matter where you're living, whatever your economy, we all only have one life. 
And the most valuable thing that all of us have is time. Well, and, and some people might disagree with you on that, but, but again, that's the important thing about yeah. your truth, right? Is that that's true for you that's, and that's going to yeah. turn into something beautiful. Yeah. You thinking that you only have one life is going to like motivate you to yes. be the best that you can be. Yes. I, sh- I should say yeah. that there are other people that will argue that you don't, yeah. you, you don't. And that's that good, like life. clarification on your truth. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, exactly. That's my truth. That motivates me. Mm-hmm. You know, and like when it all comes down to it, the more that you, you work or you get more experience, you work your way up the career ladder, it all comes down to time, right? Your yeah. time, you know, yeah. that's the one thing you time. can never get back. Yeah. You can never get back the time in your twenties where it was really easy for you to just drop everything and go on a road trip with your buddies Yeah. or go camping in a park for a month or quit your job that you hate and start working on something that you really care about yeah because the the windows start to close really quick because once you've yeah. bought your four hundred thousand dollar house and you have a mortgage payment if you do not pay your mortgage payment it will be taken away from you yeah and you're gonna have repercussions because of that you don't necessarily have to pay it you could sell your house you could decide i don't want to pay my mortgage but there's going to be repercussions for that. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, yeah, time. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Yeah. It all. Yeah. That's that's my truth anyway, mm-hmm. and, and not that that has to be everyone's truth, but I think that people should be aware of the fact that they sh- they have opportunities that they should yeah. be taking advantage of, whether you believe your time is running out or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your time is running out, whether yeah. you believe it or not. So, <laughs> aging, you're, you can't avoid hop aging. Hop on the bus. Sense. That is yeah. that is a undeniable truth that you only have. That's one of those like big T, yeah. capital T truths that you cannot deny is that you have a limited amount of time on Earth being a human. Yeah, yeah, we're all aging together. Death is real. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's end the podcast on that. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not a bad thing because it makes life beautiful if you lived forever. We need death if yeah. we're going to have life. Yeah. It's an, it's an, uh, yeah. an absolute It's got to come in those contrasts. An absolute balance. Can't have the good without the bad. Can't be happy unless you understand what it means to be sad. Otherwise, yes. it's just status quo. That's, I mean, that's another one of my yeah. truths, too. Yeah. Like, on, if there's one thing I believe more than anything else in the world, it's just that there is a balance. Oh, yeah. And you can't yeah. accept one thing and reject another thing. You have to accept both things. Well, you, you can, but then that ends you up in depression. As yeah. soon as you start to shut off bad emotions, that also shuts off the good stuff. Exactly. You can't, you can't shut off both. Yeah. Or you can't shut off one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that is a yeah. great place to end this. Cool. Um, so thank you so much yeah no problem thanks for having me this was fantastic i always enjoy our little yeah talks or our not so little talks you guys don't know this but we've already been talking for like an hour before we turned the mic (laughs) on so yeah uh yeah we're at 54 minutes oh boy Uh, we'll have to trim that a little so no it's it's perfect yeah yeah um okay Someone, someone is going to want to listen to 54 minutes. Hopefully. Yeah. Or they'll make it most of the way through because <laughs> there's valuable things at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you who don't already know who I am, go check Dan and I out on YouTube. We're at Wooey Nation. Woo. We, uh, we do fun stuff sometimes and you'll probably want to take a look. <laughs> yes. Definitely check them out. Yeah. They are they are very passionate and they are looking to provide a lot of value to the world. Yeah. And I think that is, you know what, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll link their channel in the description. So all you got to do is go click the link. What a nice guy. (laughs) Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. Really appreciate your views and listening this long. If you have any topics that you would like to, uh, for us to discuss in the podcast or for me to discuss in the podcast or another guest, Feel free to comment it below. I'm working my way through a list, but if you have any ideas, I would appreciate them and I would read them. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. That would really help me grow my channel. Call us next out.